Today, my son and daughter-in-law are going on a slightly belated honeymoon. Their five-year-old son will stay with me. Honestly, I wasn't completely without worries. My grandson has been ignoring me. Can I really spend several days with him? Okay, we're off. Listen to grandma, all right? I'm sorry, mom. Thanks for looking after everything. I waved them off with a smile. My grandson didn't respond, his face expressionless. Feeling that the road ahead was uncertain, I secretly sighed. A few hours later, my grandson came to me with a serious look in his eyes. He said we shouldn't stay in the house. Grandma, we need to leave quickly. What? My grandson's attitude suddenly changed. Leave? What are we running from? He was desperate. He urgently urged me to get ready and leave the house. After hearing the details, I quickly packed and dashed out. My name is Ally, and I'm 65 years old. I lost my husband to illness early on, and now I live alone. Day and night, my mind is on my only son, Kyle. Two years ago, he lost his wife Amy in a car accident. Living as a single father must be incredibly difficult. I suggested he move in with me, but he insisted he was fine. It's okay. Ken says he's not worried either. At that time, Ken was about three and a half years old. He was unusually calm for a child and started talking early. Living with such an understanding child, my son should be fine. I told myself that and didn't push too hard for them to move in. When my son told me he was thinking of remarrying, I was shocked. I thought he still loved his late wife deeply. Who was he marrying? The situation was more complicated than I imagined. Actually, I hit someone with my car. What? You had a car accident? When? What about the other person? Did you report it to the police? No, they said not to report it. No, that's not right. It wasn't a major accident, he said. He wasn't even sure if the car actually hit the person. He just noticed the person was sitting on the ground. He had started moving from a stop and apparently brushed a pedestrian. But an accident is an accident. My son tried to report it. But the other person stopped him. And then, somehow, we ended up dating. You started dating the person you hit with your car? How? I was really confused at first. But, you know. I felt guilty and couldn't say no. How on earth did things turn out that way? Apparently, the other person liked my son a lot. Things progressed quickly, and my son decided to remarry. Her name is Jen. She's 36, the same age as my son. I'll never forget the day she came to introduce herself. I started with an apology. I'm sorry. Were you hurt? Did you report it to the police? It's okay, I'm fine. Just a bit of numbness in my right hand and foot. I'm sorry. I was careless. It's all right, Kyle. Don't worry about it. He can't help but worry. My son has always been responsible and sensitive. He'll carry this guilt forever. And he'll probably be under Jen's thumb. One day, my son and his new wife brought my grandson to visit. I had prepared some delicious snacks and pocket money for my grandson. Grandma, we're here. Ken, welcome. Jen, Kyle, welcome. Thank you. Jen seemed to be a strict stepmother, teaching the child well. Ken seemed to have grown fond of her. They looked like a real family. I was worried at first, but the three of them seemed to be doing well. Afterward, we headed to a nearby shopping mall. When we got to the food court, I got a call from a neighbor. Hello. What? My house is on fire. The food court fell silent at my shout. My son, daughter-in-law, and grandson froze, staring at me. I explained the situation to them and we rushed back home. But by the time we arrived, several fire trucks were already there, and a crowd had gathered. My house was on fire. Fortunately, the damage to neighboring houses seemed minimal. The fire had already been doused, and smoke was rising from the charred remains. No, why? Mom, stay strong! 
My son stayed by my side as I collapsed to the ground. The house I had lived in for decades was gone in an instant. The shock left me unable to speak. I can't believe it. I had checked before leaving. Did someone else enter the room later? I didn't think anyone had entered the room, though. Anyway, what's done is done. It's lucky that we were safe and didn't cause trouble for the neighbors. Following my son and daughter-in-law's suggestion, I moved in with them. All right, starting today, let's get along, Ken. Oh? Ken? It was moving day. What was going on? My grandson, who used to be so cheerful, didn't respond to my greeting at all. Did I do something to upset him? No, I didn't think so. But even after that, my grandson continued to ignore me without explanation. My son and daughter-in-law were baffled. Trying to win him over with snacks and pocket money didn't work. Maybe he was secretly unhappy about me moving in. There was a time when he did respond to me. It was when my son and daughter-in-law went out together. For the first time in a while, my grandson spoke to me. Hey grandma, I want some snacks. Ken. I'll get them for you. But Ken, why have you been so cold to grandma lately? Sorry, grandma. I can't explain well, but I think it's better this way for now. My grandson is smart. He seemed to have a reason. When I pressed him, he said he was scared of his mom. Mom doesn't seem to like you, grandma. I've heard her complain to dad. And I think she doesn't like me either. Really? Maybe you're overthinking it, Ken. I hope so, but if I get too close to you, I don't know what mom might do. My grandson didn't seem to like his stepmother. He was trying to avoid getting on her bad side. In this house, the strongest person was not me, my son, or my grandson, but his stepmother, Jen. My grandson's cold behavior was his way of surviving here. Knowing that my grandson didn't hate me, I felt relieved. My daughter-in-law didn't think well of me. It seemed my grandson's observation was correct. She became increasingly hostile and stopped hiding her irritation towards me. Could you prepare dinner? My numbness is really bad today. Of course, I can. Don't worry. Sorry to trouble you. You're handling everything for me. Just as she said, I had become her servant recently. I did the cooking, cleaning, laundry, and shopping as she requested. When we decided to live together, I had offered to help with the housework. But I didn't mean to take over everything. Her behavior became more and more outrageous as time went on. One afternoon on a holiday, she invited me to go shopping with her. We parked the car and were crossing the street on foot when... Oh! Ah! She bumped into me from behind. A blaring horn. A car whisked past my nose. I stumbled and nearly stepped into the street but avoided getting hit just in time. When I turned to look at her, she was grinning down at me. Ally, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? I suddenly felt dizzy. Maybe it's from the accident. Maybe. I'll do the shopping, Jin. You should take a bus or something and head home. Oh, are you sure? Thanks. I'll take you up on that. See you later. She left humming a tune. She had tried to get rid of me. Maybe living together was making her increasingly frustrated. I decided to be even more cautious. One holiday, we went on a family drive. The destination was the beach. It was Jen's request to feel the ocean breeze. It was a road called Sunset Boulevard, I think. There was a place to park along the road where we could watch the sea and sunset. Beyond the guardrail was a sheer cliff. If I got bumped from behind again here. I stayed as close to the car as possible. Ally, what's wrong? Come over here. The sea is beautiful. Thanks, but I can see it fine from here. Even Ken. You two should come over here. My grandson clung to me unusually. He wouldn't let go of my waist. Was he afraid of being pushed over the edge? He seemed scared enough to make me wonder. Come on, Ken. Come here. No. I'm fine here. Don't force him. Let him do what he wants. 
With my son's intervention, we went back home that day. Jen's sinister smile when she called us to the cliff. She must think we're in the way. I was sure of it. She was trying to get rid of us under the guise of accidents. We were in danger. So, I decided to consult someone. My late husband was a former police officer. He had friends who worked in the detective department. When I contacted Dan, he agreed to meet immediately. We met at a small cafe. Dan still had the same active impression. I told him about my daughter-in-law's suspicious behavior, my grandson's fear. He folded his arms and groaned. The way she met your son is suspicious. She might be a scammer. I'll investigate. If anything else happens, contact me immediately. Yes, I will. Thank you. About a year passed, living with my grandson ignoring me. Then I heard unexpected news. My son and daughter-in-law were going on a belated honeymoon. Their destination was Singapore. My daughter-in-law smiled and said, I've always wanted to go there. The departure day arrived. Honestly, I felt a swirl of anxiety. Recently, my grandson had been ignoring me completely. Can we really manage staying alone together? All right, we're off. Listen to grandma, okay? Sorry, mom. Thanks for taking care of things. I sent them off with a smile. My grandson didn't respond, his face expressionless. Feeling that the road ahead was uncertain, I secretly sighed. A few hours later, my grandson came to me with a serious look in his eyes. He said we shouldn't stay in the house. Grandma, we need to leave quickly. What? My grandson's attitude suddenly changed. Leave? What are we running from? He was desperate. He urged me urgently, almost frantically. After hearing the details, I quickly packed and dashed out of the house. Three days later, my son returned home with severe injuries. When I rushed to the hospital, his entire body was wrapped in bandages. He was in a coma. He had apparently fallen off a cliff in a coastal area. Kyle! Hang in there! I was utterly distraught. My precious only son was in such a state. What had his wife been doing? Did she? Though she looked devastated, I couldn't fathom her true intentions. A few days later, I called her to a cafe near the station. It was a popular place, always bustling. She arrived right on time and smiled, saying, what a lovely place. But what's this important talk about? Something we can't discuss at home? Oh, I get it. You don't want Ken to hear, right? Ken was at preschool. I wasn't concerned about his ears. In a crowded place, my daughter-in-law wouldn't act rashly. I chose this spot for my safety. Jen, be honest with me. You pushed Kyle off the cliff, didn't you? What? That's a terrible thing to say. Why would I do that? Ally, that's really out of line. I'm already angry. Naturally. My only son was put through that. Ally. When my son fell from the cliff, she was right next to him. If he died, the insurance money would go to her. She must be after that. I confronted her directly. You pushed Kyle off the cliff for the insurance money, didn't you? Ally, you've been watching too many dramas. I'd be relieved if I were wrong. But I don't think so. You plan to take over our family, get rid of anyone in your way, and take the money, don't you? Did you call me here just to say that? You should stop these foolish fantasies. Wait, Jen. We're not done here. She stood up, looking exasperated. I couldn't let her leave. I intended to question her thoroughly today. As she turned her back, I brought up the incident. You set my house on fire, didn't you? She turned back, glaring fiercely. Wary of the other customers, she quietly sat down again. Ally, please stop this. Saying such things in public is enough to get you sued. I had to do this to make you listen. Now, tell the truth. You set the house on fire, didn't you? Before we all went to the shopping mall that day, you did something to cause a delayed fire, didn't you? 
You've really been watching too many dramas. There's no way I could do that. Lying won't help. I was always careful with fire. More importantly, Ken saw you. The confidence vanished from her face. Yes, Ken saw her. Before we went to the mall, she did something suspicious. It was when I went to the bathroom. You gathered flammable things near the candle, didn't you? Ken remembered it later and was horrified when he realized you were the arsonist. Ridiculous. You're taking a child's word for it. Ken is smart. Don't you realize he's suspicious of you? He even heard you make a strange phone call. A phone call? It was just before I moved in after the fire. Ken saw her talking on her phone. She looked so scary he hid and eavesdropped. You told someone, it burned just as planned. Now I have a maid. By maid, you meant me, didn't you? Ken must have misunderstood. I believe Ken. He's very smart. He distanced himself from me to avoid raising your suspicion. If we got too close, he feared you'd get rid of both of us. Ken always watched her mood and behavior. He was practically acting to lower her guard. Pretending to ignore me was part of that. An extraordinary boy. It meant she was dangerous enough to make him do that. She fell silent. She seemed to be thinking hard. She probably hadn't expected this conversation today. She was trying to regain her composure. Her eyes showed it. But I wouldn't let her get her way. I moved to the next topic. Do you remember when we went shopping together? You claimed you felt dizzy and bumped into me. You deliberately pushed me, didn't you? That's a false accusation. My numbness is because your son hit me with his car. Are you aware of your responsibility? Trying to guilt us won't work. I won't be fooled by a scammer anymore. Her eyes widened. An obvious reaction. Of course, she had revealed herself. Yes, she approached us for money from the beginning. Look at this photo. It's enlarged, but it shows you deliberately bumping into me, right? What? How? Who took this? It's from a security camera near the scene. Someone diligently investigated and got this photo with the building manager's help. That person is Dan. No. It can't be. That name. She was visibly shaken. She recognized the name. Did she hear about it in Singapore? Or after returning to Japan? I don't know. Anyway, she knew about Dan, my late husband's friend. He was the Japanese tourist who first noticed the fall and called an ambulance. Dan secretly followed your trip at my request. He deeply regrets not stopping you from pushing Kyle off the cliff. What? He was watching us the whole time? Yes. And here's the evidence. I placed another photo on the table. It was a still from a video. It showed my daughter-in-law at the moment she pushed my son. It happened so fast that Dan couldn't stop her. From the photo, it might look like she just touched his back. But the video clearly shows you pushed him off the cliff. Right? You've been suspecting me all this time? Yes, from the beginning. I thought something was off when Kyle said he was marrying the person he hit with his car. You used his guilt to control us. You enjoyed holding our lives in your hands, didn't you? That's not true. Ally, please believe me. I haven't done anything wrong. She denied everything. She said she married Kyle out of love after getting to know him during the settlement talks, not out of guilt. She didn't discuss the fire with her friends. Ken must have misunderstood. She didn't push me on the road. The evidence was just a coincidence. She didn't push Kyle off the cliff. She insisted strongly. I haven't done anything wrong. Please believe me. It seemed she was going to stick to her story. She should just admit everything. Her stubborn denial was infuriating. She wanted to escape her guilt, but I wouldn't let her. You and Amy were college classmates. What? How did you? How did I know? I did a thorough investigation. 
I checked Amy's albums and diaries. Amy, Kyle's first wife, died in a car accident. Ken was the first to notice the connection between Amy and Jen. Ken is incredibly smart for his age. He remembered his real mother from when he was four. Ken remembered hearing Amy on the phone saying, hurry up and return the money. I got curious and read Amy's diary that Kyle kept. Amy's diary? I didn't know. My daughter-in-law admitted the connection with Amy. She was completely flustered. There must be something she desperately wanted to keep hidden. The diary said Amy lent you $20,000. A significant amount. She wrote that she was troubled because you wouldn't return it. There were pictures of Jen in Amy's album. College photos. She looked much plainer than now. She borrowed money from Amy a few years after starting work. You had trouble with someone and asked Amy for $20,000, saying you'd return it soon. That was Amy's childhood savings. That's not. It wasn't bad. What did you do with the money? Did you return it? Did you use it to pay off your debt? You found Amy's demands for repayment annoying. This is just my guess, but maybe you. No. Stop with the accusations. She turned pale, denying everything. She looked suspicious. Amy died after being hit by a car. Maybe Jen pushed her from behind, just like with me? My daughter-in-law glared at me with fierce eyes. She clearly saw me as an enemy. She was thinking she needed to get rid of me. She didn't say anything, but it was obvious. There's no proof I pushed Amy. I said it was just my guess. But your reaction suggests I'm right. I said no. Stop this. She no longer saw me as her ally. Her hostility was clear. She was thinking about how to dispose of me. Suddenly, she softened her expression and laughed as if everything was ridiculous. Ally, let's stop this. I understand you're sad about Kyle, but suspecting family is too much. You're sticking to your story that you did nothing? Yes, because it's the truth. The fire, the push on the road, it's all false accusations. The photo is just a coincidence. It's not proof. You're right. It might not be definitive proof. By the way, what's your relationship with Andy? At the mention of the name, she turned pale. Her reaction was clear evidence. Andy was someone who came up during Dan's investigation of her background. They had a long history, including financial dealings. You borrowed money from Andy. And then borrowed from Amy to repay him. And then I killed Amy to clear my debt? Ally, your imagination is wild. It's ridiculous. That's impossible. I don't think it's impossible. If I asked Andy, I might learn more about you. I showed her my phone screen. A dark house appeared. A man emerged. She went pale. Of course, it was Andy. This is footage from the day you and Kyle left for your trip. I set up hidden cameras. You heard from Andy, didn't you? He said the house was empty when he arrived. No! Impossible! How did you know? Thanks to Ken. I told you he was suspicious of you. He heard you secretly talking with Andy. You said, after the trip, only the old lady and the kid will be home. Easy. Ken! That kid! He was eavesdropping? I was surprised when I heard that. Grandma, we need to leave quickly, he had urged me. Without that, who knows what Andy would have done to us. It might have been more than a robbery. We might have been killed. I handed the camera footage to Dan. I just heard from him. Andy was arrested. Dan and his police contacts caught him. What? Andy arrested? No. I don't believe it. You seem to know him well. He's being charged with trespassing. He seems to have a shady past. More information about you might come out. No. I won't be caught. It was practically a confession. She grabbed her bag and ran to the exit. Without looking back, she fled like the wind. About two days after my confrontation with her at the cafe. 
My son, who had been unconscious all this time, finally woke up. When I told my son that his wife had disappeared while he was recovering, he sighed deeply and said, I see. When we got close to the cliff, I heard a voice from behind saying, bye bye. It was definitely Jen's voice. She intended to push me from the start. I reported my son's testimony to the police. About a week later, my daughter-in-law was arrested in the South. She had fled there and planned to escape further. My son visited her in prison, requesting her signature on the divorce papers. Apparently resigned, she signed quietly. She looked so thin. She apologized to me multiple times, saying, I'm sorry for pushing you. She said she wanted to apologize to you too, mom. I see. That's enough for me. Her crimes were severe. She attempted to kill her husband and fabricate an insurance accident. Faking an accident to claim insurance money is clear fraud. There are suspicions she caused Amy's death and set my house on fire. Given her connection with Andy, more crimes might come to light. Even for first-time offenders, fraud can result in up to 10 years in prison. Likely, both she and Andy will remain behind bars for a long time. As expected, they were charged with multiple crimes. Taking a life to defraud an insurance company threatens the very system. She faced a heavy sentence and would spend part of her life in prison. Andy was equally guilty. He had deceived many people, extorting large sums of money. I wished fervently for a world without deceitful people like them. Now, I live with my son and grandson. My son's injuries have healed to some extent, but he's not fully recovered. He still limps and faces various difficulties in daily life. As his mother, I can't leave him like this. I intend to support him fully. There's a bright spot. My grandson now shows me affection without reservation. Grandma, I'll help with cooking and cleaning. Oh, really? Thank you. Ken, you're such a good boy. But what about your schoolwork? Have you finished it all? That's easy stuff. I wish it were harder. Recently, Ken started elementary school. He's working hard on reading, writing, and arithmetic. But for a smart boy like him, schoolwork seems too easy. Seeing my capable grandson fills me with indescribable joy. Lately, I've been in touch with Dan more often. He cares for us like family. With everyone's support, Ken grows steadily. I'm sure Amy, watching from heaven, feels relieved. Our family was disrupted by a terrible woman. But she's gone now. The hard times are over. I want to continue living happily with my family. With this positive mindset, I face each day.